Hi everyone, Melissa here. Today I'm doing a winter set for Robin. We are doing a buffalo plaid and we're gonna be using these really cute stickers I got from Amazon, which I will leave a link below for. Um, but what's special about this buffalo plaid is we're gonna be doing it all hand drawn. And I know that sounds incredibly terrifying to all of you, um, but I have a little cheat to make the lines stay straight. I don't require you to do perfect lines other than the uh, etching, other than the lines in the, the plaid itself. So let's go ahead and get started today. I'm going to be using double dipped Crimson Vixen, Onyx for the black and Radiance for a gold. So I'm gonna go ahead and dip her out. We are doing Crimson Vixen on the middle and ring, Onyx on, I'm sorry, middle and pinky. Onyx on the ring and thumb, and Radiance on her pointer. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all the colors just dipped out, and then we'll start working on filing and then get to the design. Okay, now we have all of our colors dipped down. I'm going to activate and file and smooth all of the nails to get ready for designs. Okay, I'm gonna take my buffer and I'm gonna smooth this nail just a little bit more, um, a little bit finer smoothness just for the purpose of drawing over it. So for this design, I'm going to be using my Micron um, 0.25 millimeter line to draw the little lines that are in the um, buffalo plaid. So it's like little slanted lines. So my initial thoughts when I was starting to do this was to tape out lines so that I could make sure that it stayed straight, but that was such a tedious task. There was so much that went into it, making sure that the strips of tape were just the right size, and it was just a lot of pain in the whatever. So I thought of a different way that I could do this by using my e-file. So I'm gonna be using this um, pointed uh, bit for my e-file, e and this is what I'm gonna be using to clean up my lines. So once I draw it out, it's kind of file it clean. So I'm gonna start, um, I want the first line to come across about right here, and it's going to be just little slanted dashes going across. And you don't have to worry about it staying perfectly even from top to bottom because like I said we'll be cleaning this up after Okay, and then I'm going to do another set kind of going across right here in the same way. When it comes to trying to draw straight lines, it's really important to just kind of brace your entire hand in some way. So my arm is braced on the table and then this hand is braced on this arm and it helps me kind of keep the pen steady so that I can actually draw a straight line. Takes a little bit of practice, but definitely, I mean, I sure didn't start when I first started doing this with straight lines. It definitely took some mistakes being made <laughs> and uh, practicing. Get it down. And mine still aren't perfect, but they do the trick. Okay, I'm gonna let those dry, make sure the lines are dry. Otherwise, when you start going in there to file, the ink will kind of smear into the dip instead of filing off of the dip, which is what you're wanting to do with this. 
So by now the bottom line should be dry enough for me to start working with it. Um, if you don't have an e-file or a bit like this, uh, working with a regular straight line file um, can also do the trick. If you just go back and forth and just try and be careful and only hit those spots. This for me, I think is more precise, so I'm going to be using it. So I'm gonna start, I'm just gonna go straight across, try and draw a straight line that will make the bottoms of these even. So I'm kind of starting where maybe the shortest one ends to try and make all the lines even here. And then I'm gonna do the same on the top. And I'm just filing away. Because with these micron pens, if you make a mistake, that's one of the best parts about them is you can just file the mistake away and start over. So why not use it to just file away a part of what you've put on the nail? Once that's done, I'm just going to grab my dip base and my clear, and I'm going to do a dip of clear over the top. Then we're going to activate, and we're going to file the free edges and smooth the top again, because we're going to do another layer of lines going the other way. You can see up at the top here, I know you probably can't see it, but I brushed over too many times with my, with my base brush and it wiped away a little of those lines, but I can fix that with this layer, so it's not that big a deal. It's not super noticeable, but that can happen if you just get too crazy just and wiping over those lines over and over again, it can start to wipe that micron line off. So you just wanna be careful, more careful than me apparently. Okay. I like to wipe my finger over like I just did because it gets any extra dust that's stuck in there that are making it so you can't see the under layers very well. Or the under layer, you can see it a little bit better then. I'm going to start by, now I'm going to do that after. I was going to start by fixing those lines, but I don't want to accidentally file that off. So I'm going to come in. So we're going to come down now in the direction that will basically cross through the direction that we did before. So I'm going to start the top and just work my way down doing lines that cross through. Now when I get to the lines that actually do cross through, I want to make this a little more heavy because with, with buffalo plaid you get kind of this heavy square where they cross over. So I'm actually going to come back in and do the opposite direction again coming through here just to thicken that out. Start deepen it, darken it a little bit and then I'm going to come in and do a little more here too. And then keep coming down. Okay. So I'm going to come back with my little e file bit and do the same thing I did with the underlayers going with these lines. And then I'm just going to do a layer of dip base over the top to encapsulate this because I'm not, I don't want to have to do another layer of clear. There's no reason for it. And then we're going to go on to putting our stickers on our nails. To prep for the stickers, I'm actually going to do a 
layer of base on each of the nails and let it dry. One of the main reasons I'm doing this is because these stickers um, have a slight part that is clear and if I put it on over the nail that has just been buffed, it has a slight, still the whitish from the buffing that you can see through the sticker part. Doing it this way will make it so that it's nice and shiny or nice and solid black through the whole thing. Okay, so we're going to gently float a layer of base over this now. I'm trying not to make the same mistake I made the first time. All right, now once it's dry, we're gonna do our stickers. Now these stickers are very easy. Um, they're called Pop Finger 3D Design Nail Sticker. They're not really 3D, I guess slightly, but um, I want this one here it's for the ring finger. So it just peels right off and then sticks right on the nail. Very easy. Uh, my nails are a little long to make placement simple. You could use tweezers. I like to make my life more difficult than that. And they just stick right on by themselves and then I'm going to do a dip of clear over the top to encapsulate it and seal it down. Okay, now we're going to activate file both, file and both, file and both. Okay, now I'm just going to activate and top coat everything. All right, and here we are. There's our finished product, our hand-drawn buffalo plaid, not too shabby. I don't, I think it's pretty good. Um, and the stickers. This is uh, Robin's winter set. But thank you so much for joining me, for joining us. And uh, if you have any questions or comments or concerns or suggestions, feel free to comment and let me know. Um, and I will see you next time.